Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. And he's good all the time. The 34th Psalm says, I will bless the Lord all, all, at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank the Lord for all the blessings that you have showered upon us on this week. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask the Lord that your spirit would grow inside of this service, Lord. Lord, we ask the Lord that you anoint each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, that we may do that which we are called to do, Lord. Lord, anoint our ears, Lord, that we may hear, Lord, a word from you on this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. In a time like this, don't feel hesitant about asking the Lord to come on and bless the Lord with me. Come 
Hallelujah. The title of the next song. Anyhow. Stumbling blocks may get in your way. People can even dig ditches for you to fall in. But we came by to tell you that with Jesus, you can make it.
And they glad to see the end of the road because that's where the water is and they can load their boat on the, the water and they can go to fishing. But as a driver in a car, when you come down to the end of the road, it's the end of the road. There's nowhere to go if you don't have no boat. I want you to realize that that boat is Jesus today. I want you to realize that many times we do get down to the end of the road and we, we look to the right and we look to the left. It's not like the crossroad. The crossroad, you still can you still can go in one direction or the other, but when you come down to the end of the road, it's the end of the road. There's nowhere to go. But I'm here to let you know that God has fixed a way that you can travel at the end of the road. That's nothing impossible for God. So just because you have come to the end of the road and you can't see your way through it and the, the water, you can't see the water of life is, is at the end of the road and you can't see your way over to the other side, it don't mean that God can't deliver you. We're in a season to where man is doing that which he wants to do and he's coming down to the end of the road. And, and this is what happened to Peter and, and Judas in this chapter. There's a lot going on here. And there's a lot going on here in our lives. You might ask yourself the question, why is he always, why is he, is he always preaching uh, 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 something about looking at our own selves or, or something about our characteristics that is not quite right? Because I want you to understand something that God sees all and he knows all. And you might be at the end of the road because of your own doing. But it's all in God's plan. There's nothing happening here that God don't know about. And if he allows you to go through, he has a plan out of, uh, 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 make a, to make a way out of no way when you're at the end of the road. Right. Right. How many times have you looked over your life or something happened uh, financially and you was at a financial crisis and you, you just couldn't seem to, 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 to pay the bill and they're telling you they're going to come and cut the lights off or cut the water off or they're going to come and repossess something and somehow and sometimes those things happen. But God still makes a way out of no way. He, he, he takes care of us and he gives us what we need. You know sometimes when you get to the end of the road you got to turn around and go back. And sometimes God have a boat waiting for you in this life. He has some way or another to where you still floating on the, on the, on the streams of life and you, you, you're not being overtaken in your life. So we find ourselves at the end of the road and we ask, can you see me now that I'm at the end of the road? A verse uh, uh, Luke 22, uh, we find Jesus and his disciples eating at the Passover, and, and, and we find that we, we call this the Last Supper, but there's a lot going on here. We find out that Judas has already betrayed Jesus, and he had come to the supper, and the Bible said he had already conferred with the scribes and the Pharisees, or, or the Jews and the priests, and they have already given him money. But he is one of the twelve. How many times have you betrayed our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ by our life walk? By what we thought our perception of how we thought things were supposed to be. And because things had, didn't happen the way we thought it was supposed to be. Or people didn't act the way we thought they were supposed to act. So we became at the end of the road and we started talking and conferring with the enemy. The enemy met Judas at the end of the road. Judas didn't like what Jesus had done, just like some people don't like the way church going now. And, and they're confirming, they're conferring with the enemy at the end of the road for pieces of silver. I want you to understand that just because you are one of Olive Grove members or just because you're one in the body of Christ or, and, and, and Judas had the same right to the healing and to the power that Jesus had gave all the other disciples but something just wasn't right inside of Judah and I want you to question now that you are at the end of the road at Olive Grove I want you to question yourself what is it right with inside of myself don't look at how I walk 
Look inside of yourself and ask yourself, do you see me now? Ask the Lord, do you see me now, Lord, that I'm at the end of the road? Because this is what matters. It don't matter how we have service. It don't matter who's the president. It don't matter what's going on in our society. What really matters is how God sees you at the end of the road. How do God see you? We find out that Jesus told Judas what he had done. And the Bible says he left a man. So we know that Judas also prophesied over Peter. Peter said, I will never betray thee. I will go to prison. I will go to jail. I will, I will even die for you. This is what Peter told him in Luke 22. And so we understand that that didn't happen. How many times have you said, Lord, if you do this or you do that, I, 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 I serve you. I, I, I do this and I do that. I want you to understand that at the crossroad, or, or at the end of the road, per se, I want you to understand that God do see you, and he knows the desires of your heart. When I met my wife, I told her I love her, I love her, you know, she, she said, I love you, we, we went and got, we gonna get married, and we got married, and, and then I had to prove the love. She had to prove the love to me. We both had to prove the love to God. I said, God, if you want me to preach, uh, 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 I'll go and I'll preach, you know. Uh, I, I stepped forward and began to preach. And then I had to prove that, that, that I wanted to continue to do that which he had called me to do. This is something that we have to reach way down on the inside because the enemy is there to prove that you, you at the end of the crossroad now, Lord, I'm going to prove that he's going to sit down and ain't going to go nowhere. In Luke 22 and 31 and 34, it says, and, and the Lord said to Simon, after, after he said, I'll die for you. <laughs> I'll I go to prison for you. See, that we bold to say those things before something happens. Then when something happens, we do like the dog. We tuck our tails between our legs and, and we go to running the other way. When it's time to fight for salvation. When it's time to fight for what that, that which the Lord has said, fight for. We don't want to fight because we're at the end of the road and we don't have a boat. Think about it. When we get mad with one another and we begin to point our fingers at one another, little curse words seem to come in your mindset. You know just what they call one another. When we got down to the end of the road, that which is inside of you is what is what is gonna come out. Well, you say, preacher, they just won't act right. My children won't act right. My hood won't act right. I got to talk this way to them. I got to treat them like this so I can make them act right. Don't you know when you're at the end of the road, all power belongs to God. Without God, you wouldn't be who you are right now. So the Lord Jesus said to Simon, and I'm saying this to you that are under the sound of my voice right now. He said, behold, wait a minute, don't talk too fast. Behold, Satan desire to have you, that he may shift you as weak. But I pray for thee, that thou faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And he said unto him, I am ready to go with thee, both to prison and, and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall crow this day before that twice thou shalt deny me. And I want you to know that even though Peter is saying with his revelation right now that 
that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But when the time came, Jesus prophesied to him and told him exactly what he was going to do. People don't like it when you challenge them. They don't like it when you mess with the inward part of their heart. Right. Right. They don't like to be exposed. That's right. That's right. They don't want you to, you, to, you, to, you to try to lift them up out of what they're in because they, they think they're already right. <laughs> well, what do you do with people like that? You leave them to God. Because he knows where their hearts are. And if he and if they belong to him, he will direct them. You see, all the power belongs to Christ. Amen. So it don't matter what you tell me or what you what you say to me, even what you do to me, God knows all about it. Sometimes we as little children, we want to fight and, 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 and what we would do, we, we know the adults will get us if, if they catch us fighting or something like that. So what we would do, we would go down in the woods <laughs> and we would fight. We would do our thing and then we'd come on back up, bruised all up, messed up. What happened to y'all? Oh, we were just playing. <laughs> but God knows all about what's going on and who we're fighting with and what we're fighting with. He knows that we are at the crossroads of life. I know you might not understand what I'm going, what I'm talking about, but just listen for a little while and God will reveal it to you in your heart that you need to examine yourself. I had to examine my intentions when I start following God because the devil said, the devil will set traps for you and he will prove to you that you're not who you say you are at the end of the road. So we find as we get into our lesson this morning, we find in verse 54 and says that after they had prayed in the God of Assembly and he tried to get the disciples to pray and, and after everything was finished, he said, let us go. And we find ourselves at this place now uh, uh, Judas has already betrayed Jesus, one of the twelve. And I, 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 I say on this because Judas was one of the twelve. It is that which is closest to you that shall betray you. It is our own heart that will betray us at times. It was our own desires that will betray us this, at certain times. It is our own way of thinking that gets us to the end of the road of many of times to where we don't know how are we going to make it over? So we find that they took Jesus and they led him and they brought him to the high priest's house and Peter followed afar. We find that before all of this happened, that, that they came in the garden, Peter brought his sword and, and cut the man ear off. Peter didn't understand. Jesus healed the man. So Peter's angry now. I can't even fight for you, Lord. Peter was fighting out of fear. He didn't want to be captured. But it's easy for us to fight one another than to sit and, and look at the content of our heart and deal with ourselves. It's easy for us to cast a stone at somebody else and, 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 and instead of looking at our own evil self, our own content, contentions, it's easy to cast the blame on somebody else. But Jesus came and he died for us. He was sent here to die. The disciples couldn't understand. So we found that one already has betrayed him for pieces of silver. And we find that the silver wasn't good enough for him. So he became sorrowful because Jesus said it would be like a millstone hung about your neck. And so... We, we find that Judas didn't want the money after he'd have done the deed. Have you ever been like that? You wanted something or you wanted to do something, then all you doing, you was very sorrowful that you did it or said it. You didn't even want it no more after you done got it, whatever it was. Many a times I, 
have eaten that salty piece of ham and, and, and no I ain't supposed to have it like that, but I eat it good while it's going down, but then later I said, I wish I never ate that ham. Yeah. Might not be ham for you, it might be something else in life that you have fooled yourself upon and, and, and you have allowed yourself to consume or, or, or allowed yourself to be in and now you're sorrowful for that. And so what happened to Judas didn't happen to Peter. And I want to bring that distinction this morning that both men was at the end of the road. Both didn't have, didn't have good understanding about why Jesus was here. They had got in an argument one time, which one of us is going to be on the right hand and which one going to be on the left hand? So Jesus had to correct them. And Jesus had to correct Peter and let him know that Satan desired to shift you. So he knew where Satan desires was. And he was letting Peter know, get ready, get ready, get ready. In the garden, he was letting them know, get ready, get ready, get ready. But each time he went back, he saw them that they were asleep. They wasn't ready for what was to come. But Jesus knew what was to come. And he know what is to come in your life. And he know what is to come in my life. The only way we're going to get ready, we got to continue to talk with him. Jesus gave us the clue when he was in the garden. He prayed. And he even asked the Father in the, in, on the humanistic side. He said, let this cup pass from me. Then he said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. So this is the only way we're going to make it when we get to the end of the road. We got to pray and talk to God. Amen, amen. So we find ourselves here. Jesus has been taken. And he's taken to, to be tried of the chief priests. And he says that in verse 55, it says, and when they had kindled the fire in the midst, of, of the hall and was set together. Peter sat down too. So Peter is sneaking in with the crowd. Have y'all ever just snuck in the club with the crowd? Or, you know, you just snuck right on in there. You know, you didn't know who was looking. You, you didn't know, you know, went to the APC store and you waited till the parking lot was empty. Y'all ain't never been to the APC store. <laughs> You have tried to sneak and do. You knew it was wrong. So Peter has snuck in with the crowd because he wanted, he loved Jesus. And some of us love each other. But we sneak it because we see things happening and we don't have no control of it. But we really don't want to get caught in whatever the situation is. So we sneak in now because he loved Jesus. He wanted to know what was, what was going to happen to him. Jesus wouldn't let him fight because Jesus came to be sacrificed. Jesus already knew it was his time. So Peter snuck in. I'm going to show you how the devil do it. Once he, once you don't snuck in or the snuck down to whatever level that he wants you at, the devil wants you at, you don't snuck down there and Nobody sees you, but how many of you know that somebody sees you at the end of the road? I ask you to ask, you, ask God that question. Can you see me now that I'm at the end of the road? And so Peter's at the end of the road. You know, the end is near now because he is afraid because he knew the Jews sought to kill Jesus. That's why he had to have somebody to betray Jesus. And the devil seeks to kill and destroy you. And so Peter, he's he snuck in there. And as he snuck in there, in the midst of them and sat down, it said a certain maiden beheld him as he sat by the fire. You know, he just sitting in there like he trying to get warm. You know how we do. We just sitting in the little house or we just, we just sitting in the wrong house. Uh, you know how we go to the grocery store, we just sitting and eating grapes that we ain't paid for yet. By the time we get to the counter, the weight of the grapes is, is a little bit lower. The price of the grapes is a little bit lower because we don't ate a fruit. So he just sitting by the fire. And just as many of you have, have, have come this 
morning just to sit by the fire, just to sit and hear God's word, but you have no intentions on doing anything. You have no intentions on doing anything, but the devil sees you at the end of the road. And it says that, uh, and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was with him also. How many of you know that once you give your life to Christ, once you start walking right, people see who you are. You can hide it and you can camouflage it, but once you have a touch from the heavenly father, you are not the same person. You might have the little light shine, the little light. You might not have a, a holy glow, but you have a little light about you and people see that light. They see you. They just don't understand what's going on with you. I know they're a little bit different. They ain't cussing as much as everybody else. So they see you differently. That's why we don't feel comfortable at certain places. Because certain places, we don't have no business. Because we are different. And if you don't feel different, then that means you ain't different. You ain't camouflage, you all there. <laughs> yeah, you're not camouflage. You, 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 you got to understand that the devil knows who you are. He know, just like God know. He know when you're chucking and jiving. He know when you, you're not, your heart ain't really with him. Just like Jesus is trying to tell his disciples, when thou art converted. That's what he told Peter. When I, I pray that your faith hold him. Yeah. So he was letting him know and he was letting the other disciples know because when he said one of you shall betray me, all of them asked the same question. Is it I? Is it I? You know if you've been talking about the man or not. You know if you've been living right or not. When I'm up here preaching, somebody might say, he must know my business. I don't know your business. You must examine yourself. I'm just giving you what God has given me. I know when I was chucking and jiving, setting up in church, Reverend Tim and Lake would, would always be preaching and seemed like he was he was messing with me. I sat there, I had to fix my clothes, you know. He sees something. Because God knows and he uses his people to expose you. This word will expose you. That's the only way you're going to get clean. The only way you can clean a fish, you got to have a fish. <laughs> and so he uses his word to expose you. And the word was, was with God. And the word was God in John. St. John it said, Jesus was the word. And so the word exposed Peter and Judas for who they are. It was some more in there too now. You had Dow and Thomas. You had some more in there that, 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 that was being exposed. That's why they asked the question, is it I? Because they had been talking too. All power belong to God because he's all knowing and all seeing. That's nothing that escapes him. So many times people want us to deal with other folks. They're not my people. Olive Grove, you're not my people. You belong to God. I have to be careful how I deal with you. I will let you go before I start dealing with you. But I'm going to tell you what's right. And if you don't like it, you can do just like Judas did. Go ahead on and betray. Simply because I'm going to tell you what's right because God holds me accountable because I'm looking at your soul. He holds me here to look at your soul and, 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 and make sure that I tell you what's right. But it's up to him because he, you belong to him and so he test chastises whom he loves. So if God ain't chastising you, you need to question yourself. Something is not right. So we find out that somebody saw Peter and they recognized who Peter was. And, and 57 verses says that, and he denied him. I'm sorry. He denied him saying to, to the woman, I know him not. Peter said, I don't know Jesus. The same one that walked on the water, or the same one that cut the man's ear off, 
the same one that, that saw the healing, the same one that was there and wanted to build the tabernacle doing on the Mount of Transfiguration, the same one that seen the, the bread and the two fishes alone, the same one that seen the water turn into the wine, the same one that was with Jesus, the same one that said, I'll go to prison with you, I'll die for you, the same one telling the lady, I, I don't know who this man is, he won't with me. I, I wasn't with him. I don't know who he is. That's how quick we can turn that thing around when we get in a little trouble. So if Peter, one of the twelve, and Judas is one of the twelve, can get down to the end of the road and think nobody sees him, I wonder how many of us sitting out in the parking lot thinking that nobody sees us. All the things that we do in life, we think that nobody sees us, but God sees us. God saw David when he was laying with Bathsheba. God knew he was wrong. God saw Saul, knew when Saul, a uh, heart had changed. God knew he had got crazy. And he told the prophet to go down and I, I'll tell you which one to anoint. And he picked the weakest of the brothers, which was King David. God knew where he was. God knew where Adam and Eve was. He wanted to see what was in their heart when they come out and tell what they had done. And they come out blaming one another. So Peter denied Jesus. Not only did he deny him that time, verse 58 says, and after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou is also of them. And Peter said, man, I'm not. Same one, I die for you. I go, baby, I love you. The same one that's telling you that is the same one that is out to betray you or could be out to betray you. We just don't know. We all are brothers and sisters in Christ, but we betray one another. We talk about one another. Every one of us out here is guilty of that. <laughs> You don't need to blow your horn. <laughs> we all are backstab. The songwriter says smiley faces tell lies sometimes. Simply because we all are guilty of that, of betrayal. And so what Jesus is writing, what, what the Lord is telling us here, why are we at the end of the road? He said, I see you and I know why you're at the end of the road. But uh, I want you to catch something else as we get on down in these scriptures. I want you to know that, 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 that God hasn't for, for, uh, forsaken you. Verse 59 says, in about the same space of the hour, another conf confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. The devil knows where you are. He knows who you is. I don't care how much you deny it. He knows. I don't care how much you say, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Same like an angel. For God knows your heart. He knows what you're saying for him or you're saying for the glory of yourself. He knows what you're preaching for. You're preaching for him or you're preaching for the money. He knows why you are out here. Is you out here just to see some of the young ladies? Or you out here to see some of the young men? Or you out here to worship God? He knows where your heart content is. And if your heart content is not right, you're betraying him at the end of the road. And so Peter said to the man, in verse 60 it says, And Peter said to the man, I know it not, thou say. And immediately while he spake, the cock crow. So the prophecy is fulfilling itself. The rooster, the rooster hath told the story. The Bible says that the cock crew. Crow. And then the sixth first verse it says, and the Lord Jesus, why he being bound and being beaten and, 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 and being stuffed up and, and when the cock crew, the Bible says in the sixth verse that, that he looked at Peter. All while he's suffering, he's looking at Peter to verify. Remember what I said? Down at the end of the road, you have to remember what God's word says about you. 
You have to remember what God's word has spoken to you in the spirit realm. You have to know. You have to know Jesus for yourself. See, Jesus knew who Peter was, and Jesus was praying for Peter. Just as I pray for you as, as, as I am the pastor of the church. But Jesus is the true shepherd. He is the true master. And as you get into your situation, before you call me, Jesus looks at you. Because you belong to him. He died for you. And you belong to him just as Peter belonged to him. The Bible said Jesus turned and he looked at him. You remember what I told you, son? I told you, you wouldn't make it. And the Bible says immediately Peter grew weary and he began to cry, cry in the 61st verse in my closing. He began to cry. Why? Because he began to regret that which he had done. He began to be sorrowful for that which was said to him, and he couldn't be the man. See, it's easy to draw a sword and cut somebody's ear off without thinking, but it's not easy to admit that you, be, you was with Christ. Just think about it. They wasn't asking him no bad thing. But he was so afraid that they were going to bound him up and do him just like he did Jesus. All he had to do was say, yeah, I, I was with him. Yeah, he's my master. But he, they wouldn't say that this time. And that's what it leads me to. At the end of the road, can you see me now that I'm at the end of the road when I'm in my sickness, when I'm in the, the, the pearl thing, that the thing that, that, that is in my darkness, that thing that is in, the, in my heart that, that I haven't given to God, that God sees you. But can you see me now? That's what Jesus is saying. I see you, Peter. It's going to be all right, son. The Bible says he hung his head and he weep. Jesus weep in the garden of Gethsemane. He said it was like drops of blood hitting in the ground. He was weeping because of what was to come. And he knew his disciples had to go through some things. He knew that he had to go to the cross and die for that which was lost. This is why he was sent here. And I want you to know that the reason why you are here at Olive Grove Missionary Church is to worship God. And also to let you know that you are the sacrifice now. Jesus said, pick up the cross and follow me daily. So you have to sacrifice yourself. You have to sacrifice that which you love and you know is wrong and you can't go do it now. Simply because you are a follower of Christ. Why? Because the world is going to ask you, do you know Jesus? It's easy to say it at the church. I know Jesus. Hallelujah. But do you know him when you pick up your liquor bottle? Do you know him when you're calling a dirt Do you know him when you're lying and stealing? Do you know him when you're trying to kill folks? Will you deny him at the end of the road? Do you see me now? God, do you see me now? I'm at the end of the road. Yeah, Many of us are just like Peter. We at the end of the road. Everybody looking at us. Everybody see all our failures, all our faults, and they're laughing at us. Look at that stupid preacher up there. Look at them stupid people right there. They're going to pay all their money at that at that place. Worshiping a God that we can't see. I see him every day. Every time I look in the mirror, I think about the gunshots. I think about the lives being pulled. I think about the car wrecks. I think about all those accidents that was on the job that I could have been taken away from here. But Jesus saw me down at the end of the road and he picked me up and he held me to the, to the enemy. Couldn't, couldn't do anything to me. He protected me. I see him every day of my life and I feel him. Every time the wind blow over my body, I feel him and I thank him. Because it could have been the other way. Been in so many different car wrecks. But he protected me. Down at the end of the road. 
Early on in our marriage, we was in a car wreck, slid on the ice and rolled down a hill. Top of the car smashed in. My wife hanging in the seatbelt, glassing on my window. I'm laying on the glass. And I said, you all right? She said, yeah. You all right? I said, yeah. I said, well, under your seatbelt, you got to climb out of your window. We didn't know where we was. She undid the seatbelt and she fell on me. That was the only hurt I felt during that crash. <laughs> we think it miraculously that when the sister came, she couldn't understand. She knew when she passed the accident that, that we were both dead because nobody told her anything. They just told her we were dead at the hospital. But when she saw the car, Been in so so many different situations to where while I was at the end of my road that God stepped in and protected me. Some of you have been sick. You know that any sickness could be unto death. But God protected you and allowed you to see another sunrise. He allowed you to come out to church for one more time just to praise his holy name for the unseen things that he has protected you from. Down at the end of the road, he's waving. As you're riding down to the end of the road, he's waving and he's saying, here I am. Try me and see. Down at the end of the road, you met him one day. I met him one day down on my knees and I asked him when I was down at the end of the road, I won't at the crossroads of life. I was at the end of the roads of life and I couldn't see my way out. And he said, come in and let's talk to me for a little while. Walk with me for a little while. Hallelujah. Down at the end of the road, when 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 people ask me, are you, are you, wasn't you with you 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 preacher, ain't you? You saved, ain't you? Why are you over here? Down at the end of the road, he says, all right, sir, get up and come on. Just don't go back down there no more. Right. Down at the end of the road, God is there for you. Yeah. This is why all these things that is in the Bible is put together. Because God has a, a spiritual plan for you in your life. He wants to know, he wants you to know that everybody failed but him. Everybody, all him and well, but him, down at the end of the road, he wants you to know that some of them was in adultery. He wants you to know that some of them lied, some of them denied him. He wants you to know that 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 he would never fail you, though. He could have got mad when Peter denied him. He looked over there and saw Peter denied him. He could have got mad and said, well, Lord, I ain't going across with him. They even denied that they know me. But he continued to go with them and he went to the cross down at the end of the road on that rugged cross the bible says about the ninth hour he hung his head and he he said it is finished and the bible said before that he told the disciples take care of his mother huh? his, whom he loved and he said, the Bible said, when he hung his head, he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. And the Bible said the earth shook. And for many days, the dead rose and walked around the city. But then on that third day morning, he rose. He came back because he loved us. Because he loved us. And when he came back, he came back. He was the bell sacrifice when he died. And he's interceding on the behalf of our sins right now because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. And so he loves us down at the end of the road, in the middle of the road, in the beginning of the road. He loves us on all roads. He didn't call us to salvation because we was on a certain road. All of us was in different roads. Doing our own thing. And he said, come unto me. Oh, you are lady. All ye that have these burdens on you. He said, come unto me and I shall and I will give you rest. 
down at the end of the road, there is rest. There's no other road that you can be saved but the road that Jesus takes you down. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Down at the end of the road. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God saved us and he delivered us from all unrighteousness. When we struggle with our sins. We struggle with ourselves. Why not just give it to Christ? So we're going to ask our minister, Lester, to come at this time. And pray for you that are suffering and that are sick. And pray for the bereaved family, the Eden, Eden, uh, Waverly Evelyn family. Pray for all of you that are struggling with your sin. You're struggling with it because you won't give it to Jesus. Yeah. So pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Father God, as humble as I know how, Father God, on this morning, God. Father God, thanking you, Father God, for just another day, God. Father God, thanking you, Father God, for the report on this morning, Father God. That, Father God, I ask you right now, God, that while I was sleeping last night, God, and as I woke up this morning, Father God, at 3 o'clock, God, that you said, pray. Father God, when I got up to pray, Father God, I started to pray about my mother, God. Because, Father God, I knew something was going on, Father God, that I needed to pray about, God. So, Father God, while I was thinking about it, God, I actually, God, that you would be with us, Father God, as she go through her surgery this morning, God. Father God, because it gave me this time, God, but you knew what time, Father God, that it was going to call her in, God. So, Father God, you met her in the operating room, Father God, and you had your angels to be dispatched all around her, God. And, Father God, you had your, the surgery team set up, God, for who you had set and appointed for that particular time, God. But, Father God, you said, pray. So, Father God, I thank you right now, God, that when I was sitting here, God, that you gave me the report, Father God, through the line, God, that my mama was okay, God, and she's in the recovery room, God, that she made it through the surgery, God, and when it was supposed to be at 10 o'clock, God, you made it early, God, and she's already in recovery, God, and I have to say thank you, God, because I know it came from you, God, that I should get up, God. So, Father God, I ask you right now, God, with the meditations of my mouth, God, that you, and, the, and with the words that's coming out of my mouth, God, that you would just continue, God, to, to be with me, God. Yeah. Father God, you know my heart, God. You know my intent, God. And I say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, when we are troubled, Father God, on every side, God, you said we don't have to be distressed, God. Yeah. Father God, when you said we are perplexed, God, you said we don't have to be in despair, God, and I thank yes, you, God. Lord. Father God, when you said that we are persecuted, God, you said, Father God, that we are not forsaken, God. And I have to say thank you, God. Thank Father God. God, and then when you say that we are, we are uh, cast down, God, but we don't have to be can't destroy it, God. I have to say thank you, God. Yes. Because, Father God, I know that the enemy, God, is coming after us, God, in all kinds of ways, God. Yes. And, Father God, all we got to do, God, is stay in our lane, God, and let you do the work, God. Father God, listen to your voice, God, and know that it's you, God. Father God, listen to everything that we must be going through, God, and know that it's you. Yes. Now, Father God, I'm praying, Father God, for those that, Father God, that are sick, those that are in the hospitals, those that are sick at home, God, those that are in the prisons, God, wherever they may be, God, I ask you right now, God, that you would touch them, God, touch their bodies, God, touch their hearts, God, touch their mind, God, send good caregivers by, God, send good aides by, God, send good doctors by, God, that they will be all right, God, knowing, Father God, that you said, Father God, that you will, God, heal us, God, and with your strength, we are already healed, God. So we just say thank you, God. And we meditate on your word, God. But your words are powerful, God. And your words are strong, God. And we just say thank you, God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, 
for each day that you give us, God, that we are not deserving of, God. But you said, God, that you are being the midst, God. And we just say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for just having your way, God. Father God, sometimes we don't know what we're going to go through, God. And sometimes we don't know what we're going to end up, God. But you do, God. And we say thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for the hope, God. We thank you, God, for helping us, Father God, to walk in faith, God, and not lose our way, God. In the name of Jesus, we just say thank you, God. Have your way, God. Thank you, God. We give your name all the praise, God. We do have a right to praise you, God, for everything that you done took us through, God, and everything that you done brought us out of, God. We say thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, we say thank you, God. Thank Hallelujah, God. God. Father God, we ask you right now, God, that before we go in and Father God, that you forgive us of all our sins and all our unrighteousness, God. Father God, so we all like filthy rags, God. We are so dirty, God, but you can clean us up, God, and we say thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Brother, you got another song? Amen. Same, brother. Jesus don't want. Jesus don't want nobody to be left behind. So we come by to the just remind you, whatever you do, be ready when he comes.
Keep going! 